Good evening. Hello, I'm John Delaney, the president and founder of Giraff LLC. We're a small strategy facilitation firm in Chicago. I'm here through uh, my relationship with Chris Murphy, whom I met when I was working on the strategic plan for Creighton, and he was on the board of directors. We just finished developing uh, the strategic plan for First West Roads Bank, and uh, in, that, in the process of doing that, I got to know Mark quite well and Kara, and they are the ones who invited me in today to share uh, some of the approach that we took with First West Roads, thinking that uh, it would give you some ways to think about how to grow your business as well. So my heart thanks to Mark and Kara for, and the rest of the team for doing such a great job on the strategic plan, and they are now at the phase where they're getting ready for strategy implementation. So for the next couple of minutes here, I'm going to break my comments really into, into sort of four categories, if you will. First thing I'm going to do is give you a brief overview of our assumptions about strategy. That kind of sets the framework for what we're going to talk about thereafter. Uh, I will then give you a very brief overview of the entire strategy development process uh, so that we can sort of really get to the heart of the um, the heart of the content here, which is developing that mental model for how you're going to grow your business. Uh, that's what we call the, the five elements of strategy, and it's going to be built around our strategy tree, and then we'll wind up with a few thoughts on how to actually implement this. So let me just get briefly into the, our, our big assumptions about strategy. Uh, assumption number one, there, there are three phases of growing with a strategy. You've got to develop a strategy, you've got to implement it, and then you got to execute it. The implementation is the hard one. The development, relatively easy. Execution, your new business model is up and running, and you're looking at what's next. Our second, uh, our second belief, our sec and this is a big assumption for us, that is that the goal and purpose of strategy has one... Uh, I think you're better off if you just walk through them. Okay. Um, because okay. with right. a short period of time, you don't have the luxury of being able to explain. Right, I get that. But if there's, you know, if, if in these seven beliefs, if there's one that's the most okay. important, highlight that. Okay, I'll do but that. Then walk I'll just through run the through others. the seven. Okay. Yeah. All right. Does that Can make I just sense? start with this? Yeah. Okay, very briefly, uh, here's a, an overview of our, our seven big assumptions about strategy. Assumption number one, there are three phases to growing with a strategy. You've got to develop it, you've got to implement it, and then you've got to execute it. The biggest challenge of those is implementing it because that's when you're making the big changes in your organization. Our second assumption is that there is one reason you want a strategy, there's one goal and one purpose to a strategy, and that's to make your customers more dependent on you. If you don't remember anything else in this, remember that the purpose of strategy is to make your customers want more of what you have to offer. Our third assumption is that an entity can only have one strategy. Our fourth assumption is that strategy should be accessible to everybody in your organization. Everybody should understand the methodology. You should be able to remember it without having to look it up in a three-ring notebook. It should be actionable and it should hold the promise of getting great results. Assumption number five, this is a team process. You can't do a strategy in a room by yourself. Assumption number six is you actually want to develop a mental model of how you're going to grow your organization over a period of time. So what are you going to do in year one? What are you going to do in year two? What are you going to do in year three? And then our last assumption is that um, a big key to strategy success is making sure that you update your strategy on a regular basis, it, sometimes quarterly, certainly annually. So those are the seven big assumptions. And with that, I'm just going to give you an overview of how we actually develop a strategy at a very high level. Uh, if you look at the diagram that you've got in front of you now, you can see that we start out with an orientation. We go from an orientation into a two-day workshop, and then we go from a two-day workshop into putting together a business case workbook and in the business case workbook, we do all of the expense analysis, the resource requirements, and the return on investment. The actual first draft of the strategy gets done in that two-day workshop, and I'm going to talk more about that two-day workshop because that's really where we develop the model of how you're going to grow the business. So that's a very brief overview of the process or the, the, the strategy development program overall. And what I want to do now is transition into 
the five fundamental elements of a strategy because um, this is really where you get into developing the mental model for how you're going to grow your business. We look over here, uh, I've got on the flip chart the five elements of a strategy. Our approach, our belief is if you only know four of the five, you don't know what your strategy is. So just working from the top to the bottom, the first element of a strategy is you have to know who your target audiences are. If you can't identify your target audiences, you have no way of measuring whether or not you're successful. That's number one. Number two, you have to have a set of audience objectives. What do you want your audiences to do by what date? These have to be measurable objectives so you can tell whether or not you're being effective. The third element of a strategy, and maybe the most critical, is the promise. What are you promising these target audiences that you're going to deliver uh, and that promise needs to be a demonstrably breakable promise, 20 words or less, everybody in your organization should know that promise inside out and backwards. The fourth element of the strategy is your projects. This is where all your tactics go. Typically we divide these projects up into what we call initiatives, strategic initiatives or big buckets of work. We lay these out over a three year time frame and this is where you get the mental model of how you're going to grow your business and this is what you end up managing the business to. The last element of a strategy are your operating requirements. We also call them strategic imperatives. This is where you put all of the sort of the internal things you need to fix to make your business run better. So if you need to lower your costs, you need a new IT system, you need new skills, they go down under your operating requirements. So let's take a transition over to the worksheet that we use to, uh, in our two-day workshop to define the five elements of the strategy. So what you see in front of you right now is what we call a strategy tree. And just working from the top down, you can see the first line of the tree. We have room here for you to fill in the boxes with post-it notes about who your audiences are. Typically, we wind up with, I'd say, six to eight major audience groups. We then go from there down into your audience objectives. You can see there's room for three. Sometimes we get four. Uh, we go from the objectives then down to the promise. You can see there's one post-it here. I would say in 200 exercises, we've never not gotten a promise onto a single post-it. And then down below the, the promise, you can see that there's a a line for where the initiatives or the groups of projects, the, the, uh, <clears throat> each one of these initiatives has room for up to five projects. Bear in mind, if you've got four initiatives with five projects, that's 20 projects you're doing all at the same time. That's a lot of organizational change to manage. And then over on the right-hand side of the sheet, you see room for your operating imperatives, uh, I'm sorry, your operating requirements or your imperatives. Then the second sheet that we just brought up on the screen uh, is, this, is the sheet that we fill in for each one of the strategic initiatives. So for each initiative that has a, at least one project, you can see at the top of the sheet here, there's uh, starting on the left side, there's room for the project name. Each project has to have a measurable objective and a date by which it's going to be completed. And then you can see to the right of that, uh, is room for the tactics. What are you going to do in year one? What are you going to do in year two? What are you going to do in year three? And the idea is that you fill one of these sheets out of the strategic initiatives uh, for each column in the strategy tree that has a set of projects. And the idea is when we get through with all this, if you look at the strategy tree and you look at each one of these sheets, you have your mental model of how you're going to grow your business over the coming three years. And that's what we end up guiding the business, or that's how we end up guiding the business during the implementation phase. So just to sum up briefly, there are, um, there are 14 points that, uh, that you're looking at on the screen right now for how to implement a strategy. Uh, the biggest thing here is to make sure that you've got a, a governance team who is accountable for making sure that this strategy gets executed. You want to make sure there's a team leader. You want an owner for each one of those initiatives we just talked about. They need to meet on a regular basis. And the purpose of those meetings is to review the projects that are underway, identify the negative variances in project performance, figure out are you going to close those gaps. If you are going to close them, when are you going to close them? 
And that's the really the big job that this group, this group does. Their job is to guide the organization to accomplish what's in that strategic plan document. And so at a very, uh, at a very high level, that's an overview of what we've done with uh, First West Roads Bank as, where as, as well as where their next step is moving into implementation. So I hope these uh, short comments were of some value to you. If you want to know more about us or our philosophy, uh, please go to um, giraffellc.net. Or if you'd like to have a conversation, please drop me an email and we'll set up a time. You can reach me at John D at giraffellc.net. So in closing, my thanks to Mark, my thanks to Chris, my thanks to Kara, the rest of the team for a great performance, and I hope you have a great rest of the day.